Hello, I'm doing a movie review, and the movie I want to review is Rabid Dogs, aka Kidnapped. Now, the film is directed by famous Italian filmmaker Mario Bava, and the movie is based on a short story entitled Man and Boy by Michael J. Carroll. Now, I have Rapid Dogs or Kidnapped on this box set featuring several Mario Bava films, and uh, here is the disc right here. Now, there are several different versions of this movie, but this DVD comes with the version entitled Rapid Dogs and the version entitled Kidnapped. Now, this movie was filmed in, I believe, the summer of 1974, which is why I'm titling this video Rapid Dogs 1974 Movie Review, because I'm pretty sure the summer of 1974 was when this movie was shot. However, I've seen some sources that said it was actually the summer of 73, and Tim Lucas, on his audio commentary for Lisa and the Devil, actually said that this film was shot in 1975 but most places say that it was actually shot in 74. But even though this film was made in 1974, the film wasn't actually released until 1995. Now, during the filming of this movie, one of the financiers ended up getting killed in a freak accident, and the Italian courts essentially seized all the footage that Mario Bava shot, and it was essentially locked away for over 20 years. But in the 19 90s actress Leah Lander, whose real name is Leah Kruger, who is one of the stars of this movie, ended up saving the footage that Bava shot from being destroyed, and she released the film under the title Rabid Dogs. Now, the version of this film titled Rabid Dogs in reality is an unfinished work print. Now, of course, Mario Bava was long dead by the time the film was finally released, so we have no way of knowing what Bava would have thought of the version titled Rabid Dogs, but a lot of people who knew Bava said that he probably wouldn't be happy with that particular version. Shortly after Rabid Dogs was released in the mid to late 90s, Mario Bava's son Lamberto Bava and producer Alfredo Leone, who worked with Mario Bava on many of his films in the past, they ended up releasing their own version of this movie entitled Kidnapped. Now, the version of this film entitled Kidnapped features different music, and it also features new scenes that Lamberto Bava shot, because Mario Bava didn't get a chance to film these back in 1974. Now, Rapid Dogs is a unique film for Mario Bava, because it was really his only movie that was 100% based in reality. Like, the story for this movie is something that could actually happen. And and many of the movies that Bava did before this were very much fantasy-based, like they very much dealt with the supernatural, and even his films that weren't overtly supernatural were still very much set in sort of a heightened reality, so this was really his only movie that was 100% based in reality. And he made this film shortly after the commercial failure of his movie Lisa and the Devil, which is a shame that that movie failed because, in my opinion, Lisa and the Devil is his masterpiece, but once again, this is a review on Rabid Dogs, not Lisa and the Devil. But because Lisa and the Devil was pretty much a commercial failure, he wanted to really reinvent himself with this movie, and do something that was completely outside the realm of anything he did before. Now, the plot of Rabid Dogs, or Kidnapped, is it's about these criminals who rob the payroll of a pharmaceutical company, and then in order to get away from the cops, like, the cops chase them into the parking lot of a mall, and in order to get away from the cops, they end up taking a hostage, this woman who's just out shopping with a friend of hers, and they even kill this friend of hers. And then later on, they need another car, so while stopped at a traffic light, they just hop into the car of this guy who has a sleeping baby in his car, and they end up taking him hostage as well. So, the rest of the movie from there pretty much all takes place in this guy's car, and they're forcing him to drive them to where they 
need to go, otherwise they'll kill him, the kid, and the woman as well. And that's the basic plotline of Rabid Dogs, aka Kidnapped. Now, I just want to say that I think it's a goddamn shame that this movie wasn't completed when Bava was actually alive, because I really do think had this movie come out when it was supposed to, this probably would have been held as one of his best films, and probably one of the best films of its genre. Now, I think Bava made this movie as sort of his way to break away from the horror genre. Now, horror was not the only thing that Mario Bava did. He's also done westerns and comedies, but horror movies were what he was most known for, and I think he was getting kind of sick of the horror genre, so he really wanted to break away with something different. That being said, I actually would consider this to be a horror film. Of course, it's horror on a much different level than something like Lisa and the Devil or Black Sabbath or Black Sunday is. Like, once again, this is very much reality-based horror, but I do consider this to be horror. And I'm sure Mario Bava would probably argue that it's not horror, like, he would probably consider this to be a crime thriller, but in my opinion, genre is subjective. It's not objective, it's subjective. So personally, I would call this a horror film, but once again, it's a very different type of horror film than the horror movies that Bava did before this. And just because something's a crime thriller doesn't mean it can't be horror horror as well, because genres can mix. And to me, this film is so gritty and so raw and so rough and honestly really disturbing as well. And the film is almost kind of a hard sit, and it definitely brings to mind films like Toby Hooper's The Texas Chainsaw Massacre in terms of how documentary the film almost feels, and it also brings to mind stuff like Wes Craven's The Last House on the Left. In fact, there is a scene in this movie which was definitely taken from Last House on the Left. Personally, though, I I think this is a much better film than something like Last House on the Left. I don't want to say it's as good of a film as something like Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Like, that's probably a better film, but once again, like, if you're a fan of stuff like Last House on the Left or the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, then I highly recommend this movie. And once again, the film is so different than anything Bava ever did before, and had Bava been able to finish this film, this movie might have actually reinvented his career. And the movie is very much shot guerrilla style, and this is the only movie that Mario Bava did that was shot in that style. And the movie is nowhere near as refined as any of the films that he did before, but honestly, that actually works to this movie's advantage. Now, even though a lot of people say Mario Bava probably wouldn't have been happy with the Rabid Dogs edit of this movie, personally, I think that's the superior version to the version entitled Kidnapped. But I think both versions of the movie definitely have their pros and cons. Now, the reason I prefer the Rabid Dogs version as opposed to the Kidnapped version is because, to me, the Rabid Dogs version, even though it is just a work print, it just feels so much more raw. And also, the new scenes that Lamberto Bava shot for the Kidnapped version, you could clearly tell that these are scenes shot in the 1990s when the rest of the film was clearly shot in the 1970s. And also in Kidnapped, a lot of the new scenes that Lamberto Bava shot were just cutaways to the police and stuff like that, and honestly, I feel like that just kind of slows the pacing down. Even though arguably the Kidnapped version has a tighter edit, for some reason though, I feel like the movie works so much better when you're just following the main characters in this car. And also, some of the new scenes shot for kidnapped kind of give away the ending of the movie, but that's all I want to say. And also, the music in the version of this movie titled Rabid Dogs is so much better than the music that they use in the version titled Kidnapped. So personally, I recommend watching the Rabid Dogs version first, and then watching the Kidnapped version. All that being said, though, there are things that the Kidnapped version actually does better. 
For example, in both versions of the movie, there's a scene where one of the criminals is sexually assaulting the character of Maria, the uh, Leah Lander character, and in the Rabid Dogs version, for some reason the subtitles have her saying, you're obnoxious, and not for nothing, like, yes, the character who's sexually assaulting her is obnoxious, but that's not really the kind of thing I picture somebody who's being sexually assaulted saying to somebody, you're obnoxious. But in the kidnapped version, they changed the subtitles to where she's saying, you're revolting, which is a little better than you're obnoxious. Now, in the movie, Leah Lander plays the character of Maria, who you definitely feel sorry for because you realize that she was just kind of in the wrong place at the wrong time. And you especially feel sorry for her that she's just pulled into this really horrifying situation, and what the criminals do to her is so freaking disgusting. And arguably her and of course the little kid in the movie are definitely the most sympathetic characters in the film. In the movie, Ricardo Cucciola, I'm not sure if I'm saying his last name right, but he plays the character of Ricardo, who is the second hostage, and he's a really interesting character because once you've watched the entire movie, you realize that there's a lot more to this character than meets the eye. In the movie, Maurice Pulley plays the character of Doc, who is the leader of these criminals. And one of the things that's interesting about Doc is even though he's the leader of this little group of criminals, you start to see that he's really losing control of the situation, and, and you also realize that he's not as smart as he thinks he is. In the movie, you also have George Eastman as the character of 32. Now, in the movie, he's not credited as George Eastman. He's actually credited under his real name. But George Eastman's character of 32 is so freaking disgusting and such a repulsive character. And honestly, I might find him to be the most evil out of the three criminals. In the movie, Don Backey, who, like George Eastman, is not credited under that name, but is actually credited under his real name, he plays the character of Bistori. And Bistori is a very interesting character, and honestly, I find him to be probably the most interesting character in the movie. And to me, Don Backey, his performance really does stand out among all the other performances in the movie. Because the character of Bistori, I don't want to say he's necessarily sympathetic, like, that's not really the right word for it, because he really is just as evil as the character 32. At the same time, though, there are little moments, like, there are subtle moments where you actually do kind of pity him. And there's also sort of a subtle current of homosexuality with this character, where you almost get the idea that he might have homosexual feelings for the character 32. And something does happen later on in the movie where you actually do feel kind of sorry for him. But even though I think Don Backey is easily the best performance in the movie, that's not taken away from any of the other performances in the film. I personally think all the actors who play the main set of characters do fantastic jobs in this movie. In the movie, there also seems to be some subtle social commentary, especially on the absence of religion in our modern world. Now, I do believe Mario Bava was a very religious man, and and in the movie, there's a scene where they end up picking up this obnoxious hitchhiker, and they don't really want to do it, but they don't really have a choice but to pick her up, and that will make sense if you watch the movie, but this hitchhiker, she says that her name is Maria, the same name as the other character in the movie, and she makes a comment about how not too many people are named Maria anymore. And according to Tim Lucas on the audio commentary for this movie, Tim Lucas this is sort of a Mario Bava scholar, and he points out that Mario Bava kind of meant that as sort of a 
thinly veiled comment about the absence of religion in our modern world. And also, one of the final scenes in this movie takes place in an abandoned church. Another sort of comment about the absence of religion. And there are also moments in this movie where Maria is holding this child in the car, and those moments almost call to mind images of the Madonna and the child. So there are some definite religious undertones tones in the movie, or more so, undertones about the absence of religion. Now, there was a remake made to this movie in 2015. I have no idea if the remake is any good or not, but there was a remake. But yeah, that was my review on Rabid Dogs, aka Kidnapped, and bye.